NEDC urges urgent review of collapsed Lao Dam after widespread devastation. Kidnappers ambush police, kill DPO in Delta during rescue mission. Super Eagles return to Nigeria as airport ordeal in Libya sparks reaction. On the foreign scene, Israeli airstrike on northern Lebanon claims 18 lives. Hello and welcome to the News Hour tonight on Trust TV. I am Aisha Saliho. The Northeast Development Commission has called for a review of the collapsed allowed dam project which led to the devastating floods that left many dead and millions displaced. The commission made the call during an inspection tour of some of the projects undergoing rehabilitation after the Meduguri floods, among them Alau Dam, which led to the destruction of farmlands and road networks in some parts of Burnish State. Trustee Beatrice Karutsi reports that flood-affected communities have called on the government to rehabilitate roads connecting local governments and neighboring countries to boost economic opportunities and businesses. His report. The flood, despite its destruction on roads and farmlands around Nguam community of Jiri local government, brought in its wake an abundance of fishes, turning most residents to fishermen. Duna Mustafa is among those making a living from fishing, but he complains of bad roads and the loss the community incurred during the flood. <laughs> As a result of the flood which affected our farmlands, we lost a lot of rice farms. The road too was not spared. Two years ago, these communities were not safe because Boko Haram killed over 100 people that year. But today, I thank God for security agencies. I am also happy with the efforts of the state and federal government, including the NEDC for fixing the damages caused by the flood. The road he complains of is under reconstruction by the Northeast Development Commission and the Commission's representatives are in the area to inspect the projects. <laughs> The NEDC officials also took a look at the collapsed allowed dam that overflowed into Meduguri and other local governments last month. The commission is under very serious contractual transaction on the construction of the roads and rehabilitation of this spillway. You know, each contract carries some terms of reference. But unfortunately, in this occasion, we have some kind of a uh, force major which affected or will affect both the contracts and other contracts as the case may be. So we're here today to assess what has happened after the uploading and see how it affects the general conception of the project and to, to devise some way forward. Uh, nationally, the names are uh, the name that used to give uh, notice or alert on areas that some flood are anticipated. You know, but you know, there are different categories of flood flood that is being expected. Uh, flood could be mild, could be splash, could be this, could be that. So nobody could have told us uh, this extent of the flood. But as you also know, it was uh, still the cost of water that in 2022, uh, you know, got this uh, spillway damage. We are now, we came to do the intervention. So uh, if you ask me, whether there was uh, anticipation or notice of this extent of flood, uh, I would say no. Uh, but definitely there are, we knew there was a problem and it was a problem we are trying to solve when eventually now the, uh, the, the whole dimension of the, 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 the what we are expecting change. And then so 
So now we have to review everything. The NEDC officials concluded their project inspection tour with a visit to the University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital, Dental and Eye Clinic, among others. Bitro Skuruti, Trust TV News, Meduguri. Meanwhile, the Kogi state government says ravaging floods have sacked over 200 communities and displaced over 2 million people in the state. The State Commissioner for Information and Communications, Kingsley Fanwo, who disclosed this on Monday at Kotonkarfi in Kogi local government area of the state, noted that a major humanitarian crisis is brewing in the state. He said the nine local governments where communities are affected include Kogi, Lokoja, Adavi, Ofu, Ajakuta, Ida, Andibaji, Igalamela and Omala local government areas. The state government therefore called on the federal government and international donor agencies to come to the aid of the state to cushion the attendant hardship. Also, several areas in Makodi, the Benue state capital, have been flooded following a downpour that lasted more than nine hours on Monday. The rain, which started around 3 a.m. and continued until noon, affected several areas including Gado Villa, Wadata, Wurukum, Achusa and parts of North Bank in Makodi. Checks around town reveal that those living in riverine areas and refused to relocate were the, were the worst affected. The state government had earlier issued warnings to residents in flood-prone areas urging them to move to designated locations within the capital city. In the affected areas, residents were seen evacuating their submerged belongings. Meanwhile, the Executive Secretary of the State Emergency Management Agency, James Iopu, said the agency was fully prepared to meet the needs of those affected by the flooding. Iopu, speaking through the information officer, Tena Age, said many residents living in flood-prone areas such as Gadi and Wadata had already relocated to designated camps in Wadata and along Boko Road. The Nigeria Hydrological Agency has issued warnings regarding imminent flooding in Adamoa, Taraba, Kogi, Nasarawa, Benue, Anambra, Bayelsa, Delta, Edo, Cross River and River States. The Director General of the agency, Umar Mohammed, urged the affected states to step up vigilance and deploy adequate measures to reduce possible flood impacts that may occur as a result of an increase in flow levels of major rivers. Lagdo is a reservoir located in the northern province of Cameroon on the Benue River in the Niger Basin. The lake covers an area of 586 kilometers square the release of water from the Lagdo Dam in 2022 caused massive floods in Nigeria, leaving 603 persons dead, 1.4 million displaced, 2,400 injured, 82,035 houses destroyed, and 332,327 hectares of farmlands submerged. Residents of Agbadoi Joko, a remote community in Ifo local government area of Agun State, are voicing concerns over years of alleged neglect, poor infrastructure, and lack of access to essential healthcare services. In a recent outcry, community members highlighted their struggles, urging both the state and federal governments to intervene urgently. The report. As the situation becomes more there with each passing day, Agbado Ijoko residents in Ifo, local government area of Ogun State, have made a passionate plea for help. Called on the state governor, who they claim has passed through the community several times without taking any action to address their worsening living conditions there. Residents report that many people have been forced to leave the area due to unbearable conditions. According to Trust TV News, the community is now nearly uninhabitable following constant flooding, deteriorating roads, and lack of security. Elizabeth Agboje, a resident of the affected community, shared how the frequent flooding devastates homes and streets, making daily life a struggle. The water will come near the last distance. We fill up all everywhere to that side. No roads that we 
we will never see any road. The road is very, very bad. And this area is very, very bad. We cannot even move. We cannot go like this. We will just stay at home. The community's plight underscores the urgent need for infrastructural development and improved healthcare services in the rural areas, where neglect has left many citizens feeling abandoned and desperate. In this Okpoelu area, up to Agbado Ijoko, we are calling their attention to the state of our road. At present now, we have no road. Our children cannot have access to schools. Our women have no access to markets. In fact, most of the houses here has been demolished, all with the intention that the government is coming to do the road. For over four years now that houses has been demolished, government is not coming to come and work on the road. As you can see, the road is totally out of way. We pass inner roads to our various places. And this is a major road. In fact, it's international road. It's the road that connects from up to Idiroko. A lot of people have died as a result of this road. If you see what we go through on a daily basis, especially during the rainy season, it is no good. It's always promise upon promise. There is nothing. They have not done anything. This place looks as if there is no human being here. When you look at your back, some properties were here. They, 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 they all gave way. They destroy it all in the name of doing road. And yet the road is here. Eight years plus another eight years. We are going to 16 years now. We have been neglected here. Nothing is being done to us as if we are not part of Ogun State. That's just my own opinion. In the rainy season, we don't always go to school because of the water. We fool all this place. We always further. My mom don't always go to the market because of the rain. Because now I cannot move from here to that place. I will fall down because of this so-called bad road. The road is so bad that there's nothing that you can do here that will, will give you your daily bread to eat. It's terrible. Market is not selling at all at all. Nobody is making anything that he and his family can take to take care of themselves. We are just here. A lot of people are dying here because of sickness. A lot of people are really dying because of sickness, because there's no care. Now I, now I wish to go to hospital. I cannot move. No vehicle that can come here to take me to hospital. People that's working at Ikeja or along or Oshodi, so many of people that park from this place to another way. Because this place now is a, look at this road now, RCB. This place, there is no rain now, but everything, every display, even though vehicle cannot move for this place now. Anyhow, look at this, how the thing be. Not only this place, it's like this again. So every, everywhere from here now to Agbado, from Agbado to Abule, that is the road. The middle of the road now is too bad. As conditions in Agbado, Ijoko worsen, the community continues to appeal for urgent intervention. Residents here are hopeful that the government will finally address the critical issues of flooding, infrastructure and security to enable them to live safely. Fifteen members of the Boko Haram terrorist group have surrendered to the Nigerian army on Sunday. A statement from the Nigerian army said it conducted an operation in the Agoata region of northeastern Bernou State against Boko Haram. The statement indicated that 15 members of the group surrendered during the operation and that their camp was destroyed. Boko Haram, which has been active since the early 2000s, had has carried out mass violence since 2009, resulting in the death of tens of thousands of people. Since 2015, the group has also conducted attacks in neighboring countries like Cameroon, Chad, and Niger Republic. A suspected ammunition courier, Zayanu Abdullahi, have been arrested in a successful security operation along the Anka Bagega Road in Zamfara State while allegedly transporting ammunition. The arrest was carried out by troops in collaboration with the Zamfara State Community Protection Guards following a tip-off from local residents regarding suspicious movements in the area. According to security sources, Abdullahi, who hails from Shinkafi local government area, 
was intercepted at a snap roadblock set up by the security team. During the search, he was found in possession of 35 rounds of 7.62 mm special ammunition concealed in a wrapper. Preliminary investigations have indicated that Abdullahi was en route to deliver the ammunition to an individual identified as Wadata in Bagega town. Authorities have placed the suspect in custody and are intensifying efforts to apprehend Wadata and any other individuals potentially connected to the case. Salon Security Matters a divisional police officer and several officers have been reportedly killed in an early morning ambush in Delta State, while another DPO remains in critical condition following a kidnap rescue mission. The tragic incident, according to Delta human rights activist Israel Joe, occurred near Aguarho Rail Station around 1 a.m., resulting in heavy gunfire exchange between the police and the kidnappers. He said the new DPO of Agbarho, who resumed just two days ago, was among those killed, adding that he was ambushed alongside the DPO of Orerokwe CSP Paul and their team during a rescue mission. Joe expressed deep sorrow over the loss, noting that the Orerokwe DPO was rushed to an undisclosed hospital where he is currently fighting for his life. He further extended his condolences to the Nigeria police force and the families of the fallen officers. The Delta State Police is yet to issue an official statement at the time of filing this report. Four yet-to-be-identified persons were on Sunday burnt beyond recognition in a fire incident that raised down a lounge and bar located along Bale Road in the Olodi Apapa area of Lagos. This is even as two persons got killed by a collapsed fence in the Ejigbo area of Lagos on Saturday. Lagos State Police Public Relations Officer Benjamin Hyundai, who confirmed both incidents, said four staff members of the hotel were burned to death in the fire incident. He said the fire, which affected the whole building, was later put out. Similarly, Two out of the three victims of a collapsed fence at Ejigbo area of Lagos on Saturday died as a result of the injuries. He said all the victims were walking home under Saturday's heavy downpour when the fence fell on them. Still in Lagos State, a two-story building has collapsed on Amoso Street in Orile, Igomu area of Lagos State. The building collapsed on Monday morning as people were about to start their business activities for the day. A video of the building as it went down was posted by a media executive and blogger Samuel Olatunji on his Instagram page. It could not be ascertained the number of people in the building when it collapsed. However, a statement by the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency response team said no casualties were recorded during the incident. And to the Green Chambers of the National Assembly, the leader of the House of Representatives, Julius Ihombere, has decried the non-implementation of prohibition against persons with disability act by both government agencies and those in the private sector, saying unless something drastic is done, the law will remain just on paper. Ihombere, who spoke at the public hearing by the House Committee on Disability Matters, said many Nigerians, including head of government agencies, believe that the act, which was signed into law in 2018 by former President Muhammadu Buhari, was a mere joke. The chairman, House Committee on Disability Matters, stressed the need to invite all relevant stakeholders to ensure that these engagements will help make considerable and impactful progress. It is worthy of note that we view these are a vital part of our society. They are family members or parents who cater for the family needs. They make invaluable contributions at workplace, participate in all activities that involve life. Therefore, 
they should not be limited in their activities and struggles to earn a living, get education, and enjoy equal rights. It is also of special interest to us the issue of accessibility to public buildings and the use of sign language interpreters in the media and for public communications. Most of the MDAs lack the requisite technical capacity to mainstream disability in their work. On the other hand, the National Commission for People with Disabilities is yet to develop a sector-based training models to support MDAs across diverse sectors. What we really need in this particular time is to see the implementation of the already science disability bill and also to see how the honorable member will also beautify the already sign that is to look into it i think the first thing is to deepen our collaborations with um government agencies, especially Ministry of Works. The current mass transit buses that have been inaugurated, CNG buses, I own cars, I own fleet of buses. I'm a person with disability. You should, I'm a transporter, but I can't even go to queue to convert my car to CNG. Nigeria suffered another nationwide blackout on Monday, October 19, 2024, as the national grid collapsed for the sixth time this year. Data from the Nigerian system operator showed that by 7 p.m. the grid had dropped to zero megawatts, plunging the entire country into darkness. All 22 generation companies went offline, raising fresh concerns about the nation's fragile power infrastructure. The Transmission Company of Nigeria has yet to issue an official statement leaving businesses and citizens in the dark about the cause or resolution of the collapse. This latest outage follows previous grid failures, including major blackouts on February 4 and August 5, further highlighting the instability of Nigeria's power supply in 2024. You're watching the News Hour coming to you live from Trust TV Studios in the nation's capital. Still to come. Our state government right rates commitment to rural development. More news on return. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Let's have another look at some of our top stories. We told you that NEDC urges urgent review of collapse allowed dam after widespread devastation. Also, kidnappers ambush police kill DPO in Delta during rescue mission. Moving on to other stories. Prices of rice and other food stuff have crashed for the first time since last year in Taraba State. According to reports, big measure of locally processed rice which sold for 3,300 naira and 3,600 naira in the last few days has crashed to between 2,400 naira to 2,800 naira. Similarly, a 100 kilogram bag of locally processed rice that sold at the rate of 171,000 few days ago is now sold at 135,000 naira. Also, a 100 kilogram bag of paddy rice sold at 60,000 naira few weeks ago has come down to between 46,000 naira and 50,000 naira. Findings revealed that a big measure of white beans sold at 5,600 naira last month is now sold at 4,200 naira. Similarly, a 100 kilogram bag of maize sold last month at the rate of 60,000 naira has also come down to between 42,000 naira to 48,000 naira. Prices of yam, cassava and groundnut also crashed by about 20%. Garba Adamu, a middleman, attributed the rising cost of food items in the state to cost of transportation. He said food stuff in rural markets are cheap, but however, regretted that cost of transporting the food stuff to Jalingo is what is increasing the prices of food stuff. 
And to politics, the Independent National Electoral Commission has announced that collection of the permanent voters card by registered voters will commence on Thursday ahead of the governorship election in Ondo State. The INET National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Sam Olumekun, announced this in a statement on Monday. The Ondo State governorship election is scheduled for November 16, 2024, according to the statement. A total of 89,777 new PVCs were printed and delivered to INEX State Office in Akure. This includes 58,708 new voters and 31,069 individuals who applied for transfers, updates and replacements of lost and damaged PVCs. The PVC collection, according to the statement, will be available at two levels across 221 centers in the state. First, in all the 203 words from Thursday 17th to Monday 21st October 2024, and secondly, in all 18 local government area offices from Wednesday 23rd to Tuesday 29th October 2024 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily, including the weekends. The Commission urged all registered voters to pick up their PVCs in person. Reiterating the collection by proxy is not allowed. Under a sad development, two people have died in a multiple vehicle crash at Second Rainbow Bus Stop along the Oshodi Apapa Expressway in Lagos. A statement by the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency signed by its permanent secretary, Olufemi Oke Osaitolu, on Monday said it received a distress call and activated its state emergency response to the location. Information gathered at the scene of the incident revealed that the man, the man truck suffered a mechanical failure at high speed, lost control, crashing into other vehicles. Unfortunately, two male adults lost their lives in the incident, while several others who suffered various degrees of injuries were attended to by La Sambas. Residents of Araromi and Rotimi fishing camps in Okwama Kingdom in Brass local government area of Bielsa State have been sacked from their homes as a result of the overflow of Atlantic Ocean that has left residents and fishermen stranded. The devastating incident occasioned by the consistent downpours in the state led to rising water levels in the rivers and creeks, as well as flooding in farmlands. The ocean surge has already destroyed buildings, fishing tools and forced residents to relocate from the settlement, though